This video is designed to talk you through the anticyclones and depressions section of your GCSE course. If we start off by having a look here, you can see that the definition for an anticyclone is an area of high pressure that brings good weather, and that a depression is an area of low pressure that brings bad weather. If we come across and think about these two arrows, basically this uh, first arrow here indicates an area of low pressure. Okay, So for whatever reason the air is rising, we already know that as air rises it cools, it condenses and typically it forms clouds. Those clouds then will bring precipitation. So therefore this is exactly the situation that happens with regards to depressions, a low pressure weather system which brings bad weather. If we think about this arrow, we can see that this is high pressure. So in this example, the air is sinking. As the air sinks, it warms up and is able to hold more moisture. Sorry, moisture. So therefore, clouds don't form. So this is the scenario that we see with regards to anticyclones. High pressure weather systems, the air is sinking, no clouds uh, forming and therefore we don't get any precipitation. So that's the sort of the, the principle behind these two weather systems. Let's deal uh, in more detail now with depressions. So depressions are areas of low pressure that bring bad weather. Um, Depressions typically have three fronts. Remember, a front is the leading edge of a body of air. So a warm front will be the leading edge of a body of warm air. A cold front is the leading edge of a body of cold air. And an occluded front occurs when the cold front catches up with the warm front and starts to mix. Another principle that we need to remember is that cold fronts move faster than the warm fronts and therefore when the cold front catches up with the warm front it gives us an occluded front. If we have a look at this diagram here you can see that depressions typically form out here to the west of the UK and Ireland. They typically track east and slightly north as they move across the UK and that's the pattern that we see throughout uh, the majority of the year. This is a classic depression that we have in front of us. We know it's a depression because it has low pressure at its centre, as indicated here by this label. In a depression, the warm front always comes first. Um, the warm front is represented normally by red semicircles. Um, it's an orangey colour here in this diagram, but normally red semicircles. The cold front normally comes second, which is represented by the blue triangles. And whenever we get um, the cold front catching up with the warm front, we get a mixture and then we get the occluded front. An occluded front would look something like this. So it would be a mixture of both warm and cold. Um, it can be blue and red like that, or else it could be coloured completely purple the whole way through. The isobars tend to be a little closer together uh, between the two fronts and uh, you can see here that these isobars are close together. The isobars being close together indicate strong winds um, and if we come down and have a look at this diagram, it looks slightly confusing but this is basically the cross section of a depression. Remember um, that we've said already that the passage of a depression is that it moves in an easterly direction as represented by this arrow. So this is the first place on the land which would experience the depression. You can see the warm front slopes at an angle. In front of the warm front we have cool air. In behind the warm front we have the warm sector which has warm air and warmer temperatures. And behind this, the cold front we will have cold air again. If we come up and look here, so that equals cold in this sector. We've got warm in here. And then again, we've got cold here. Okay, so cold all the way around this section, and then the short 
warm section in here. This cold uh, body of air typically comes from the polar maritime air mass. So it comes down from the north west of the UK. This warm body of air typically comes from the tropical continent, sorry, tropical maritime air mass. So again, it comes up from the southwest. The two of them mix and interact to give us our depression, which forms the west of the UK and then moves easterly in this direction. In your exam, you would be required to know and understand how the weather conditions change with regards to wind, pressure, rain, visibility and temperature across the whole passage of the depression. Okay. As you come down to the bottom here, you can see this is a typical satellite image of um, a depression. We will probably see this area here um, representing the warm front and we would probably see this area here representing the cold front. It's a rough diagram from the satellite image but that's the typical movement. Remember that the depression has formed out here with the interaction of the polar maritime air mass and the tropical maritime air mass and then it's moved in this direction across the UK. Depressions. Second uh, air mass that affects the UK is anticyclones. Remember we said that they are a high pressure weather system that brings good weather. If we come down here, this is a synoptic chart, <coughs> excuse me, representing an anticyclone. <coughs> In this part of the diagram you can see that we have high pressure. Remember we said that that represents descending air or air that is sinking. That air is warming up, clouds don't form and we get no precipitation. So we can see here high uh, pressure. There are no fronts associated with an anticyclone. All of these other fronts are associated with other air masses outside the anticyclone. And typically what happens is the anticyclone moves over the UK and will sit there for a longer time period. Depressions can pass in a short time period, uh, as short as 12 hours. Anticyclones may sit for two or three days, or sometimes we may get a blocking anticyclone, which can sit for a period of much longer, two or three weeks. So therefore the contrast between uh, anticyclones and depressions has just been explained.